Hello, this is Mike at Gay from Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing Babylon JS tutorial series. Now, first off, I want to apologize. There's been a bit of a lag in basically any coverage on this channel. I just had my eyes done, and I've had a lot more time uh, reacting to be able to actually see the screen to do anything. Uh, so things have been a little slow. They should start picking up. I can actually kind of see what's in front of me, which is always a nice thing. So, anyways, without further ado, let's jump right in. This is Babylon JS tutorial series. We're at part six, I think. I assume you've seen the other parts in the tutorials. Uh, there's a text based version, the text based version of this one, as you can see in front of you, is already done. And what we are covering today is 3D models, specifically Blender 3D models. We're going to look at the process of exporting a model from Blender to um, use in our Babylon JS uh, project. And then, of course, we're going to look at the code to actually display that model. Sounds like a lot, but actually it isn't. Ideally, this tutorial should be about 10 minutes or less. It's actually not a lot of work involved, which is very cool for concerning what we're getting out of this. So. First off, we need to have the installer. Uh, that is available, specifically we are looking at Blender today. There's also an installer for 3D Studios Max for Cheetah, a generic FBX one. We are looking specifically at the Blender only process. So if you're using one of those other tools, the installation process is going to be a little bit different. Uh, but in this case, all we need to do is go ahead, click this link. I will link the uh, text version of this tutorial, which contains the link you need uh, down below. Uh, once you've got it linked from GitHub, you want to just go ahead and download it. It's just downloading a zip called Babylon to Bl uh, sorry Blender to Babylon uh, dash 5.2 zip. Obviously, if this is sometime in the future, grab the most current version of it. If you're in the Blender exporters folder, you will see you can also grab the the raw files that go ahead to make this guy. But it's easier to install it via the zip. So just grab whatever the newest zip is, and we're off to the races. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are other exporters available, but we are not covering them today. All right, so once you have that zip file downloaded, uh, go ahead, fire up Blender, trusty Blender default scene here. Uh, go over here to File, User Preferences. And then under User Preferences, switch over to Add-ons, select Install from File, uh, go ahead and find that file that you downloaded wherever it happens to be, and click uh, and bring it up. Uh, that will ultimately bring you, I've already installed it, so you're not seeing the exact process for me, but you will bring you to a screen that looks somewhat like this. Worst case scenario, come up here and filter like so. Uh, I did Baba for the beginning of Babylon. Uh, you'll see the exporter here. Again, if you did this from zip, it will automatically bring you to this. All we need to do next is hit the checkbox. And done. We now have the importer enabled for exporting from, or the import exporter enabled for exporting from Blender to a Babylon format. Now, uh, one thing you may want to do at this point is click this button right here, the save user settings. Otherwise, you will have to re enable this every single time you start Blender up. There are some reasons why you would want to go one way, some reasons why you would want to go the other way, but if you're going to be doing a lot of exporting, save it to your default so that plugin is always enabled. You won't have to import it every time, but you will have to turn it back on. All right, so we now have the ability to export from uh, Blender to Babylon. So if you come here down to export, you will see now there is a new option there. Now let's go ahead and actually export something out. I'm going to go ahead and get something from, uh, this is a model I have made available. It's on the uh, Patreon backers Dropbox link. Um, but you can use whatever Blender file you want. So if you are a patron, by the way, thank you. Uh, but you can use this direct file if you wish. It's just a simple shipping container that's been textured. It's got the various different uh, texture maps on it. There's a, an ambient lighting map, a normal map, and a diffuse color channel map on there. But again, use whatever model you want. Now, I do caution you, though, when you're trying to get your workflow working, Always start with a simple model with simple texture and nothing more. So textured model sometimes because the exporter will require a texture to be uh, attached. So always start with a very simple textured model, no animations, not a whole lot of fanciness going on, just to make sure your workflow works. That way when something does break down the road, you've got a baseline to work from. So again, start with something very simple. Or if you have access to it, use this model, because I can already confirm to you that it does in fact work. So once you've got your model loaded, whichever one you happen to pick, go ahead and select export, and then Babylon JS. Now you will notice there are absolutely zero options, which is actually a little disappointing. I wish there was the ability to specify what your up axis is, a very common thing in exporting to game engines. Sadly, here you cannot. Um, now, once you've got it set, pick where you're located. So I'm going to dump this straight into where my code is. So my code is that index file right there. So let's export the scene out here. And let's head on over and check that out. So we go into C temp model. And here's what it's generated. It's created a .babylon file. It's copied all of our three textures over, which are all PNG files. 
and uh, the Babylon file is the most important bit. Now I'll show you this in process in a second. So here is some basic code. Uh, if you've been following the tutorials to this point, um, you'll have a pretty good idea of what's going on here. I'll, I'll go through it very quickly, but there's not a lot special happening. And I'll go over here to file view and you'll notice, oops, file view. Uh, there is that .babylon file it created. Damn it, it called it, damn it. I really wish it didn't call it index.html.babylon. Um, you know what, I'm gonna undo that. That was a mistake on my behalf. I shouldn't have clicked that index file when I was showing you. Uh, so I just wanna go ahead and get rid of all of you guys. So ignore this part for a second. I just shouldn't have, um, so what I wanted to do was file, export, babylon.js, shipping container, babylon. All right. My mistake. So there you see, it now actually has the right name. It's a .babylon file and all the textures were copied over. So head on back over. Let's take a look at what that .babylon file contains. Very simple text format. Uh, basically, it's a JSON file containing all of the information, the texture information, the uh, vertex and UV mapping information for our particular model. These can get quite large, um, but in this particular case, it's a fairly small one because it's a very simple model on purpose. Um, so there is the .babylon file we wanna go ahead and load. This is gonna be loaded via a JSON parser. It's, it's all done transparently for you, so don't worry about that. But this is essentially can be thought of as the 3D format for Babylon um, files. So get rid of this text view. Let's go on back to our, oh, I need it back. Where's index? Let's open our code up. All right, and now you can go away. Make this a little bit easier to read. Uh, very straightforward stuff going on here. We create our canvas, create our engine, create our scene, uh, set the scene background color. Now the first thing we are going to have to change from uh, normal is by default, it's going to look for a .manifest file when it's loading assets. And we don't want to do this. These are used for uh, offline rendering and it's completely um, not something I need and I don't want to have to create them. So we'll just go ahead and set engine.enable offline support equals False. And this will get rid of the .manifest file error. So if you start getting .manifest file errors, go ahead and just turn that guy off. Uh, so otherwise, we're going ahead, we're creating a camera, uh, we're creating a light, we're attaching said light to camera, we're turning the light intensity up a little bit too, just to make things look a little bit sharper when we're done. And that's it. Now it is time to go ahead and load our model. Now the models are loaded asynchronously. Uh, we use a a uh, class called scene loader. So it's just babylon dot uh, scene loader. Hey, just a sec, let me import that so I get, ah, okay, one sec, I'm using the wrong uh, URL here. Um, come on. All right, so I just wanna switch it. I was using a local install. I just wanna go ahead and switch to the CDN link and set on back over here. So, all right, save that. All right, sorry. Uh, back to our code. Uh, so scene loader right here. Uh, we want to go ahead and just import our polygon mesh now. So scene loader dot import mesh. Now you can actually bring in named pieces of mesh. So if I actually go back to Blender, you'll see uh, that this guy is actually called cube. So we could import the single mesh, have multiple meshes in a single uh, .babylon exported file. But in this case, I'm going to just treat the entire thing as a whole. So once again, don't really need that. And shipping container .babylon, obviously our file name. Next up is scene where to do it. And then finally, there is a callback function um, that basically is going to be called when the load is successful. So at this point in time, it's gonna call this code when this mesh has been successfully imported. And it passes in an array of meshes that it imported. In this particular case, we actually only have one. Uh, so we could just use it. And we can actually be done at this point. We don't need to go through all of the imported meshes, but I'm gonna do this just to show you some of the post-processing you can do. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate the mesh 45 degrees, nothing special, but um, so new meshes is a collection of the meshes it imported and we'll loop through them for each, like so. And again, for each one, we are actually going to be calling that function. So it's passed in the mesh that was processed. I think I am right on my level of levels. And we're just gonna go mesh.rotation equals new babylon dot 
vector three and that is a lot of tools. Uh, where was I? Dot two radians forty five. So all we're really doing here is rotating forty five degrees about the uh, x axis just to show you that you could so if you needed to do uh, multiple for example you easily could so that should be the end of our scope end of our function i think in theory we are done here let's go ahead and run our code we have an error Line 49. All right, what did I screw up? Uh, where did I get wrong? Okay. So callback function begins, ends. Looks like I just have an extra. Okay. There we go. So there is our uh, shipping container. As you can see, it was loaded. It was rotated 45 degrees. So if we wanted to, we could actually get rid of this entirely. Uh, so there, don't need any of that. And it will simply have not rotated at all. So just showing you that's something you'll handle. It's basically, as each thing is loaded, go ahead and run this code. So if you do need to things like do things like scale up, reorient, um, reorientate, reparent, etc., your meshes, that is where you can do them. But as you can see, we really don't have to. In order to load that mesh, really all we need to do is call this import mesh. This could be left as empty or null, and we are off to the races. And as you can see, there is our model um, loaded into. Uh, Babylon, very clear. You can see a lot of intensity because of that actual light that I'm shining at it. But very simple. It's, it's, there's not a lot involved in actually bringing a model in. Now, of course, where this does get more complicated is when your model import, export breaks, something goes wrong, there's an incompatibility there. That's why I recommend you start small and work your way up. Uh, but that's it. That's all we're going to cover today. Very straightforward, simple process for the most part. You just go into Blender, you add the uh, the new add-on, you export as a .dot Babylon file, and then the code, as you saw, is very simple. We basically just need to call scene loader dot import mesh. And as I said earlier, if we had sub meshes within, we could specify them by name here. Um, and then the only other thing to really be aware of is this enable offline support if you want to get rid of the loading of dot manifest files on load, or you can Google a little bit more that if you actually wanted to find manifest files for your various different files to make them available offline. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, please do, of course, click like and all kinds of tutorial series here on Game From Scratch. Now that my eyes actually work, we should be seeing a lot more updates again. Uh, so please do click subscribe if you want to see more game dev related content. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Goodbye.